Welcome back, Mr. Declan Emelumba joins us next. He is the Commissioner for Information for Imo States. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. Well, we just heard the President of the Trade Union Congress talking about uh, some of the issues they had with that led to all of this protest strike, which has been suspended now. Uh, if you could just start off from that point where he says that there was an MOU that was signed, a tripartite meeting having held between the Imo State government, the NOC, and the TUC. That MOU was signed in May this year, he says. Was he correct when he said that? Well, yeah, to some extent it's correct, but I want to give you a little background, if you don't mind. Before that MOU, on 29th of January 2021, NLC leadership, uh, national leadership met with the government and His Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, uh, Senator Obu Zodema, was there. And after that meeting, there was a communique that was issued by both parties. And TUC was there, NLC was there, uh, TUC Secretary General was there, uh, NLC uh, Secretary General was also there, the, uh, uh, Emmanuel Obuaja, who is still the Secretary General. And that communique started by saying that they commended the government for paying salaries regularly and as and when do, even in difficult times. It also went further to say that the government should set up a tripartite committee to look into complaints about those who are, uh, have not been paid and uh, that once they are verified, they should also be, also be paid. The same communicator also talked about commencement of immediate uh, payment of check-off dues and so many other things. Now, after that agreement, the, the, the committee was set up, headed by SSG, as agreed by both parties. And this committee had been made, Labour was written formally by SSG uh, to, to bring their members. And on the uh, 18th of May, 2021, they submitted a list of their members to, for the negotiation, for the discussions. And that included NLC, included TUC, included all the industrial union leaders in Imo State. And that committee kept on meeting regularly. And in the process, check-off dues was uh, paid to all the unions. Minimum wage was paid, uh, and that, that was 30000 The government commenced payment of minimum wage. And the salaries, all those who had problems of uh, verification issues were verified, and they were all paid. And so we were moving on smoothly. There was no problem because... The labor and government was meeting regularly based on that agreement of January. And that was the situation until, and if you notice, from that January till uh, January uh, 2023, uh, uh, this year, there was practically no problem. Now, what changed was that in April 2023, Ajero uh, emerged as the NSC president. And immediately he emerged. The, the, the situation started changing. And before then, I'm, I want to tell you, when he emerged as the president of NUC, NLC, the governor was so excited because he said, ah, this is the first person from Southeast who is emerging as the NLC president. And he immediately congratulated him and directed me to liaise with his people for him to hold a reception for him in Imo State to express his joy. And I liaised with his people, the acting NLC president, Mr. Philip Wansi, and the uh, uh, the treasurer of NSC then, uh, 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 Godfrey of, of Fable, who is currently, who they have made the, the, the caretaker committee chairman. And I, I sent my message to them to tell uh, uh, the what government plans. And they delivered the message, and he was in Imo State. After his people received him, and they attending the burial of his uncle also, we expected that having received this message, he was going to come to pay a cost call on the governor. And we are waiting for him. So the governor will now have opportunity to interface with him. And then we agree on a date for the reception. But he left. He didn't even bother to visit the governor. Not a message, not an acknowledgement. And you know, it became a bit worrisome. We said, ah, why should he behave like that? But be that as it may, as we moved on, then the, in, in, uh, in March uh, this year, there was supposed to be a delegates conference where they were to elect their leaders. And in the process, the, the, the labor leaders here, the local labor leaders here, complained that he wanted to change the rules along the line. By the way, the government is not interested in whoever becomes. The governor said, anybody who emerges as chairman, that is an Imo worker, he will work with the person because his interest, after all, is for the welfare of Imo people. 
But it was the labor leaders who complained that there was a, a problem because uh, Commander Adiyoro wanted to impose uh, uh, somebody on them. He, he was insisting on imposing uh, a, a particular person on them. And they said no. So he tried to change the rules. So at the end of the day, on that day, the election could not hold because of the disagreements they had. And what was the response of Comrade Ajero? That very day, he imposed a caretaker committee on the uh, uh, workers and then declared industrial action against the government. And, you know, it was surprising because there was no in this foot, there was no issue between government and uh, labor before then. Okay. So, uh, when I declared, yeah. so um, part of what you, you said, um, yes, you did uh, agree that they were partly right, that there was an MOU that was signed. Because TUC told us here, the reason why he, re he was responding to when I asked him that the governor had said Labour had never written anyone of the, had never written the government. It made people believe that there was no communication between Labour and the government. So when you then also agree that yes, there was that MOU, that kind of questions what the governor meant when he says there was no communication between Labour and the government. No, I, I, I doubt that the governor would have said that because the governor meets with labor regularly. At least the labor leaders here would confirm that he meets with them at least once every month. So that is, there, there was never any communication gap. But the point I was, I was coming to that MOU, the point I'm trying to make is that when the situation changed because of IJRO's decision, he tried to declare industrial action in Imo State two or three times. And you know, it was surprising. So that was why in May, you know, this question of, uh, uh, occupy him. He had been insistent, uh, insisting on it. So in May, he wanted to do the same thing. Uh, uh, no, that was in, during the, I mean, in uh, March or so, during the presidential election. He wanted to do the same thing. So we managed it. And at the end of the day, he said, okay, what was the problem? They, we, we met with them, yes. And they were raising the issue of non payment of salaries. And we said, no, government is not owing anybody. And there is evidence that government has been paying based on. In fact, if you go to uh, our website, payroll.imostate.government.nigeria, uh, you will see the facts, which I think I forwarded to you also. Government does not, is not owing anybody, including pensioners. All verified workers in Imo State, 98% of them have been paid, except a few. And that few is even uh, uh, those who don't have, maybe don't have current, uh, current accounts and so on. But 98%. And this industrial union uh, leaders here, I've always acknowledged that. So that, that MOU he was referring to, absolutely nothing new in it. It was saying the same thing, government should be meeting with labor. And government has been meeting with labor. And so there was nothing new. And that it will interest you to know that after the election, you know, all the industrial unions endorsed the government. After the election, two days ago, the whole workers of people say came to government house to celebrate with the government, to congratulate him. So it was in the process that they also had that the TUC chairman was talking about non-payment of salaries and so on and so on in your channel. Okay, and so yesterday, they, they met, just a minute, sir, they met yesterday and reached a resolution, which I also forwarded to you, if you, if you watch, you will see it. All the so 15 industrial unions in the state passed this resolution, where they stated emphatically that the government is not owing anybody, any worker, any verified worker in Imo State. They also went ahead to say that the government has been paying them agreed minimum wage of 30,000 naira to workers and recently increased it to 40,000 naira to put on the effects of uh, fuel subsidy removal. They, they, they have heard that there has been a harmonious relationship between government and labor and that this governor promoted workers who had not been promoted for over 10 years, who had been stagnated for over 10 years, promoted them across the board. They also went as far as saying that the government also instituted an insurance scheme for, for mm. workers. Well, Commissioner, assess that, that, that document that was signed, did it include the TUC? Yes. The TUC is there, I look at it. It's there. And I, I, I want to let you know that check it, I have it full. All of them are there. Now, one thing that should interest you is that when, after the TUC was in that agreement of January, but you won't believe it that as soon as IGRO came, the TUC chairman here, uh, when 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 Nigeria started with issues, along the line, the TUC, TUC chairman was so impressed with what the governor was doing, so he wrote him a letter to thank him for what he's doing for Labour, and that he was forwarding his name for an award 
by the DUC. Okay. The response um, of the DUC at the national level was to suspend him. Well, clearly, so there, there, there are several there are several issues which we may not have all the time to visit in, but yeah. um, the president of NLC, also in fact TUC, in Labour entirely, accusing the government of and his agents of being behind or being responsible for the attack on Joe Ajero. My brother, I will tell you emphatically, the government has no hand in that attack. The governor has said it, and that is the correct, and that's the truth. And the governor has also regretted the attack. He feels bad that he was treated that way. But I think it's also important to note that the NSA has said they have arrested some of those who attacked him, or those who attacked him. And I don't think any government official uh, uh, was among those arrested. The government, uh, why would the government want to attack a son of the state who is occupying such a position, who the governor was ready to host? ready to receive and, and do everything to show him uh, brotherhood and, and fraternity. So, and if you watch, I don't know what is really the agenda because that same allegation, when, they are, when, they, when the delegates conference fell in March, Ajero said it was the government that aborted it. Everything pointing at, at, at the government. And it, it, so when you look at it against the background that we also know he has been meeting with the uh, Labour uh, Party candidate, governorship candidate who lost the election last Saturday. They have been meeting with him regularly, even before this so called strike. Right? So you begin to see political colorations in it. You ask yourself, why should an NSC president take off by fighting his government, his state government? That's the first time it's happening. It's supposed to be a, 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 an asset. It's supposed to be an advantage to us that we have our son who is NSC president. But what we have had is continuous counter cross. A disposition against the government, and that I suspect is because he doesn't like the party of the government, the, uh, which is APC, because he also demonstrated it. The sad thing is that he uses is using uh, uh, respected labor leaders to pursue this personal agenda. And I don't think that they, uh, I don't blame them so much because they might not know. Some of them might innocently be following him. But if you ask yourself, if the first two years, three years of this government, there was no industrial disharmony in the state. Why did this industrial disarmament in start suddenly after Ajay emerged as the, as the uh, NSC chairman? And why is it that in spite of repeated pleas by the leaders of the industrial unions in the state, that they have no problem with the government? He is insisting that they have. Why does he want to cry more than the bereaved? Or why does he want to be more Catholic than the Pope? The people here are telling him, we have a good relationship with this government. And even the Nigerian Union of Pensioners, Gave the governor award as the most friendly pensioner, uh, pensioner governor since the creation of Imo State. Why is he not listening to all those things? Why must he continue to insist that there's a problem when those are grant repeatedly? And some of them, when they do it, he wants to suspend them. He suspends them actually, right? threatens them. So why is it? Why? What is? What is? What does he have to hide? It's unfortunate that this is the situation, but that's the reality. This government has no problem with level. The, the, the person who started creating problem is called the Red Ajay, and I don't know why. And the government is ready to work with him because he's an emo son. There is nothing. If he says... Well, some people will say that perhaps, you know, as a son of emo state, he, he wants his state to be the model state of what he expects from other states as labor leader. I do not know whether you'll agree with them. I mean, that's certainly up to you. But if you say, oh, or the Imo state government continues to maintain that it is not owing any workers, but then there is a but. Uh, you say, oh, just a few. You know, then there is a question mark. It means that not everybody has been paid. Because all we hear over and over and over again is that we're not owing anybody. And... One would now wonder, why should there be a dispute? If you still acknowledge that except those who have one issue or except those, it means that not every single worker has been paid. Isn't that correct? Well, I can tell you, I forwarded all the data to you. When you check that number, it's not up to 300 or, or thereabout. Now, the point is that, you know, we pass through an automation process. And that, that automation process was supposed to sanitize the system. There were a lot of people who were receiving double salaries receiving at the local government and at the state level. There were a lot of people who were uh, uh, 
not actually working. They will sit in Commissioner their house. Commissioner Emelumba, no. sorry to interrupt yes. you. Do, you. do you mind telling us, you know, just how many workers have been affected? Because you say not up to 300. Uh, yes. Okay, so not up to 300, but over how many months is the key question no. here? No, no, no. It, it, no. This, what I'm telling you now is the updated data as of October. So uh, I'm telling you as of October, all, from all the verification, not in the, all along, the all verified workers, and they are maintained that they have been around 98%. But there are a few that have issues, which even the governor has not directed that whatever is the case, please find a way to, to uh, just ignore it. But that is because he wants, he is a, 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 a worker friendly governor. And he doesn't want anybody to uh, uh, feel that maybe. Uh, these people who have issues, maybe I do they really have the this in doubt. But what I'm trying to say, the major point I'm trying to make is that when Ajero says government is going has declared ten thousand ghost workers, mm. please ask him to so produce I am the name. And I'm I'm a little you know bothered that as as to whether or not you think that because the, the governor makes the point over and over again that the NLC president is from Imo State. Are you bothered yes. that this assault on the NLC president, who is a, a son of Imo State, happened within Imo State. I've already said that that the government regrets that assault, and the government will support the prosecution of all those involved in that assault. That is not in the character of this government to 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 condone such uh, uh, assault. Uh, so, but having said that, we must also not lose sight of the fact. That Ajero himself, as the chairman of NLC, who is from Imo State, is not conducting himself well because he's, he's crying wolf where there is no wolf. And like I said, Mr. Emelumba, when you say that the him, government will prosecute, sorry to interrupt you once more. I, I didn't say but that. when you say that the government will support the prosecution yeah. of all of those involved, uh, will it also include the prosecution of one of the governor's aides who has been mentioned by? Uh, labor unions, Mr. Chin has that one area. Would, would it also include that? Would it support that as well? Chin has that one area was not involved in that attack. I can tell you categorically. He was not even around him was there that day. I can tell you categorically. He was not involved. These are the pigment of imagination of, of uh, those who are uh, labeling him. Like I said, no government official was involved. And this is verifiable. Now, the, the NSA has arrested some of them. And the police uh, is investigating. So no government official was involved. I can tell you that. It's, it's, it's a statement of fact. And you can find out for yourself. So, you know, when you have a, a fixation about a government, like I said, this is not the first time he's alleging. He said government disrupted uh, uh, the delegates' conference. Government disrupted Mede. Government, everything is government, government. So he has a fixation. He's just about the government. And that is where all this is coming from. And you make allegations. Oh, oh, all right, quickly. I understand that my colleague Ayo has a question for you. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Malque. I just wanted to quickly ask uh, you, uh, Mr. Melumba. In May this year, if you can hear me, um, the governor was said, you know, apologized to emo workers over non-payment of salaries. That was in May, and he cited the example that you cited that there was some. Uh, uh, automation and biodata capturing system for pensioners. How many pensioners were affected at this time? In May, what year? This Please, year. You didn't say the year. No, no, that's not correct. What you said, and I, which, uh, that's not correct. It couldn't have been in May this year. Where did he say that? So you're saying that the media reports that the governor owned up to the fact that uh, workers and retirees hadn't been paid for a while since 2007 was not correct. I didn't get that, please. You didn't get what I said or you didn't get... No, I, did, I didn't get what you said. I didn't get what you okay. said. In May this year, May 2, it was reported this year that the governor apologized to workers and retirees over... Uh, unpaid salaries, pensions, and gratuities. And you also mentioned it here this morning that it was because of biodata capturing and um, other technology stuff like that. How no, many, my, how many uh, workers were affected by that hitch that you talked about? 
No, 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 no. The, the governor couldn't have apologized to workers and pensioners this year. It's not possible. It's not true. And I, I, I challenge you to produce the evidence because by this year that we are talking about, uh, if in fact, from last year, two years ago, all verified workers in Imo State have been paid. So, I mean, we are paid as and when due. So the governor couldn't have apologized. And mind you, just uh, uh, two, uh, about a month ago, the pensioners where they were adopting the governor said the, 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 the chairman of uh, Nigeria Union you know, of Pensioners in Imo State said in the presence of his national presidency that the governor has paid all pensioners and that this is the first time it is happening. So how can, how can they be saying that and you are talking of the governor apologizes? It's not true. It's not correct. All right, Commissioner. Uh, we have to anchor at this point. We do thank you for your time. Declan Melumba, Commissioner for Information for Imo State. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so that is the show today. We do thank you all for watching. Well, uh, I know we're looking for your messages, but not to worry. We'll make our time and take them next time. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Soff. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Have a productive day. I'm Ayo Makinde.